The long, long, long way back is that both Brad and I are both ex-military communicators. There was an opportunity to get into media contract work. It was my first day at uh, the broadcast company that I worked for. Within a week or two, um, who I now know to be Brad, walked into the same room. And we were instantly like eyes locked. Familiar face. Love at first sight. He obviously said hello. And we very quickly became like a good engineering team working together. Running alongside of that, I had the beginning, the kind of fledgling parts of what Cerberus Tech is now, running as a business. Along came an opportunity to work in the film industry. Um, and so through a contact that we had, there was an opportunity to provide these sort of services to um, film industry when they were doing on location shoots. He was doing some work for uh, the new Star Wars movies and uh, he phoned me up one day and was like, mate, you need to come down to set because we're on Force Awakens. And that was the, that was the hook that was required to get me really invested in it. You know, I saw one stormtrooper and I was like, oh, I'm so in. The chance to do something for yourself and build something for yourself was a real opportunity I couldn't say no to. Anybody who started a company knows it's not easy for the first few years, um, especially as we had our first kid chatted to my wife and she was like, look, you gotta do it. So beans and toast were the number one meal of choice for a, for a while, but that's how we started. There was a request to see if we could get live video from set, so out of the back of the camera, essentially, or out of the, the back of the, the DIT operators um, setup, and deliver that live to a trailer. I stupidly said something along the lines of, no, it's not outside the realms of possibilities that we could deliver that video feed from the back of the camera to wherever you happen to be in the world. Uh, and there was a kind of casual, like, do that, invent that. Um, and that kind of set us off on down this path of, of Chris and Brad, where I invent things in my head, sell it to a customer, then he's got to invent the real version of it. Um, and he, as much as he complains about it, he really loves it. We've got three products, Network One Services, which is all our 24-7. So we're really interested in the networking side of it, the droplets and the egress of data, and the ingress and egress of data, because you know we're not traditionally just transferring data into the cloud or out, we're, we're running constant stream of data. Recently we launched LiveLink, which is our automated platform where customers can do their own broadcasts essentially themselves if they want to or we can do it for them and we've just tried to create something that was simple that would make it nice for people and that they can monitor their feeds and see what's going on but in a way that they don't have to worry about putting all the parts together. That's kind of where cloud really comes into it. Rather than having two locations who never really know where they're trying to send video to or from, if we put a cloud reflector in we've at least got one static point. So the source can send it to the static point and the receiver can request it from the static point, which means that those two objects could revolve around the world. It could be in the hotels, it could be in studios, it could be anywhere. They were always asking from wherever they were to get to this one fixed point. So they could be pre-configured, you could set up all the security, and you could ship it out with, min with uh, minimal involvement. And that was almost seven years ago that we deployed our first cloud computing video reflector and immediately knew at that point that the technology solution had applications that went far beyond the, the film and TV production world, but actually went into broadcast media, live linear circuits, sports, news, esports, um, and that was kind of the birth really of our services division. At Service Tech, we're here to get right to the content source and deliver it to exactly where it needs to go and then clear the hell out of the way. We started off on AWS. We couldn't scale our services at a price point that was reasonable to our customers. And, you know, we, we've always been, from the get-go, uh, a company that want to keep the prices, deliver a brilliant service, but keep the prices down, you know. Uh, a tendency to have quite high prices in the broadcast industry, and, and we want to be competitive, but better. Um, and DO allows us to, to do that. Where did DO stand out? DO had support, DO made it easy, DO had an easy to understand API um, information for the developers to interact with. Brad loves DO because he, you know, he was led to DO by having some specific questions on different you know, technical aspects of things like Linux or 
um, DNS, where we were trying to figure some things out um, there. And more often than not, he was finding the answers on DO forums that had nothing to do with DO as a cloud platform, but you know, it was a really friendly developer base that was sitting there answering questions and helping people out. So DO was always there and in our minds. The company's just getting bigger and bigger every day. At the beginning of this journey, it was just me and Chris, and we knew each other and we knew what each other was thinking, but obviously you can't stay like that forever and you need to start expanding the company. You need to start bringing people on that you can trust. You can't micromanage. You have to trust that individuals know what they're doing. Our development team, they do not hold back when they don't like something. Um, if anything is remotely slow and clunky to interface with, they start throwing their teddies out of the pram. Um, they do not do that with DigitalOcean, um, and that's that's about the endorsement I can give. You know, th those guys are happy, and a happy developer is worth their weight in gold. Mm -hmm.